ready? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of our Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Amanda, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, where we are very excited because today's the first day we're opening our doors to our members to check out the aquarium and come on back. And then on Sunday, we will be opening the doors to the general public. So we look forward to seeing all of you who've been spending time with us at home one day here actually at the aquarium. Uh, but for now, we still are excited to offer these programs for you. And so today, what we are going to be doing for the next half hour is taking a closer look at a very interesting animal. It is a fish, and the animal I'm talking about is a mackerel. So we are going to be looking at the Pacific mackerel and taking a look, first of all, at the outside and then at the inside of them. So if you are someone who gets a little queasy about insides of things or body parts, uh, this is just a word of warning that this will be, um, I guess, a little bit graphic uh, later on for the second half of the program. To begin with, we'll be looking at the outside of the fish, which you might find very interesting because there's so much about the fish to learn from the outside just by observing it. So you can probably relax the first part. It won't be too gross, <laughs> but I did want to give any word of warning, and I'll let you know as we get closer to uh, looking inside the fish. So... You will notice I'm actually wearing gloves today. I decided to put on some gloves so it doesn't get too messy on me and I don't get too smelly. Uh, but that's why I'm kind of hiding my hands because they look kind of weird right now. Uh, but let's take a look at our Blue Cavern exhibit. And I'd also encourage you to contact us if you would have, um, if you have any questions or things you're observing as we go. Um, we would love to hear from you. And so we have a number that you'll see on your screen right here that you can text. Uh, just make sure you have your parents' permission or the adult's permission that you're with um, to text us because regular text messaging rates will apply. Uh, but you can text us at 562-286-1838. Or if you're watching this program at a later time and had some questions that you wanted to get answers to, you can text or you can email us at the email you see on your screen at live at lbaop.org. All right, so you ready to dive in? We are going to be looking at a fish that can commonly be found in this type of habitat that you see behind me. This is our blue cavern habitat here at the aquarium, and it is a kelp forest habitat. So this is where you might find mackerel. Now, before we look inside the mackerel or even at the outside, let's see as we just observe this particular exhibit. As you look at the fish in this exhibit, what is it about fish that makes them special? What are the things that separate them from mammals, from reptiles, uh, or even other invertebrates that live in the ocean? What do you notice about them? Well, I know one of the first things we think about are the fins of a fish. And fish can have very different shaped fins, uh, very, and they can be used very differently too. So even if you look at the fish in this exhibit, we had a senorita that just went off that way. It's a very long, skinny uh, fish with kind of not much of a of a tail. It just kind of goes straight out. Now, if you look at this one, this one right here has a little bit more of a, not quite forked, but it's more of a triangle shape to its tail. Now, of course, the shark has a little bit, has lobes, what we call, so it's got kind of a little off-centered at the leopard shark as we were looking at it. But let's take a look at what the mackerel looks like. Have you heard of the mackerel before? Well, let me show you what a mackerel looks like, and then I'd love to hear what kinds of observations you make about it and how it might look different um, or the same compared to any of the fish that you might see here in our blue cavern exhibit. So here is a mackerel. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can get a little bit better view of it. So it's a fish that's, you know, this one's less than, it's less than a foot long. Uh, but they can get up to 24, maybe even 25 inches. So this isn't a huge fish. It's a kind of, your kind of classic average shape fish, I guess. But what do you notice about it as you look at it? Now, I might need to change the lighting in here throughout the class to give you different uh, perspectives to be able to see things a little bit better. But if I lift it up, maybe you can see a few of the other features of it. Or maybe even if I, maybe if I dim the lights, let's see if that makes much of a difference. Does this look like a typical fish? What are the parts of the fish that you notice as you look at this? There's a tail. So what do you notice about the tail? Hmm. 
Well, as the fact that it is a fish, uh, there are different types of fish. So sharks are in a different category because they don't have bones in their body. They have cartilage instead. But then you also have, so this is what we would call a bony fish. And then if you look at its fins, notice how it has kind of rays in between it. So this tail fin is not just one solid piece of skin, basically. It's made up of these individual little rays. Now, do you see any other fins on this fish? Try to make it a little bit more visible for you. Where else do you see fins on the fish? Let me rotate a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, right here. So this fin right here, actually maybe I need to take my gloves off so you can see the contrast a little bit better. It also has these rays, so a ray finned fish right here. But let me, I think I'm gonna try to take my gloves off because it might be a little bit hard to see the contrast with the dark. So there you can see a little bit more the fins. So these right here, the fins on the side of the fish are what we call the pectoral fins. So you'll notice they have one on each side. So here's the other, other side. And these pectoral fins can be used for different, in different ways on different types of fish. So this one will use it mostly for steering, but it does keep it pretty close to its side. Now there are some fish that will actually use their pectoral fins to help them move forward through the water. And they generally tend to be a little bit wider. Uh, these are not very wide fins, you'll see. They're, they're kind of small, but it's fusiform body shape. Did you notice how long and skinny this fish is? That also to helps, it, helps it to move through the water fairly quickly. And the fact that this is a very forked tail like this also would indicate this is a pretty fast swimming fish. Now, there are other things that we're not seeing. Do you notice any lack of fins? We know that they have these two but where else do fish have fins? Well, especially if you're thinking of sharks, we often think about fins on their back, dorsal fins. Do you notice any dorsal fins on this fish? You might not notice it, but right here, we can actually pull up the, the fins so you can see they also have these spines in them. So these ray fins, these little spines with a little bit of connective tissue in between. And so they can use those as kind of like a sail uh, to help them keep their balance so that they're not spiraling through the water as they're swimming. But they also have another one. So there's a second dorsal fin right back here that kind of folds down as well. So they've got two dorsal fins. And then did you happen to notice these little bumps here? These are what we call finlets. So those are little finlets. So they've got the two dorsal fins, the finlets, the pectoral fins, and then also they have pelvic fins. So these are the pelvic fins of the fish right down here on the bottom. They're kind of folded in. So did you realize that fish sometimes kind of fold in their fins so you don't see them? So they're not always sticking out all the time. All right, so we know fish have fins. Those are very easy to see on this fish. But what else did you notice? Anything else? What's another fish characteristic? Well, you might think about the scales of a fish. Now, I don't know how well we're going to kind of experiment with this a little bit to see how close we can look at the skin or the scales of this fish. Because the, the scales on a mackerel are much, much smaller than some other scales of other fish. So you can kind of see some differentiation there. And so their skin or their scales are so small, it actually gives them kind of a velvet feel. So when you do touch a mackerel, it feels very, very smooth and you don't feel some of those, you don't really feel those individual scales because they are so tiny. But hopefully you can kind of see some, some of that difference as we zoom in a little bit. All right, so they do have scales, they have fins, they have this fusiform shaped body. What are some other things that are special about fish? Well, of course, how they breathe. So how does this fish breathe? Of course, they use gills. So where are the gills of the fish located? Now, if you're saying, oh, well, right here, do you kind of see this little line right here? Many times people think of that as being, being the gills. Say, oh, well, this right here, if you just kind of open it up, these are the gills of the fish, right? Well, believe it or not, the gills are on the inside. So this part right here is a covering, which we call the operculum. The operculum protects the gills, which are located inside. 
So there's kind of a peak. The operculum is like a little door that covers over the, the little filaments the inside of the gills. Okay, so I'm hearing that it's really, really bright there. So we're trying to find the right contrast here uh, to help make these visible so that you can see it. Okay, well maybe to help us understand the gills and how they work a little bit better on fish, we actually have a little illustration. So we breathe air with our lungs, right? So as the water or the, the air goes into our nose and into our lungs, it's our lungs are pulling the oxygen out of the air. Well, the gills are pulling the oxygen out of the water. So as the water is going into the fish's mouth, then it flows over their gills. It can come out the side here. But what's happening is those gills are kind of getting the oxygen from the water as they're passing over these filaments. Now, when I say filaments, that's kind of this reddish looking, kind of feathery looking stuff that you see right here. Well, if we were to take one of those out and just look at one of them, the gills are located on something called a gill arch. And so it's this long piece that the filaments kind of stick out from. And so there's one arch with lots of filaments of gills on it. And so here's a picture of one gill arch. So you can see they're labeled here with these things called gill rakers and then the gill filaments here. Well, the gill rakers have a very interesting role because if you've ever looked inside the mouth of a fish, if you've ever seen them opening and closing their mouths, sometimes you can actually see what looks like right through the fish, right to the outside. It looks like you're looking right through their gills. Now think about that. If the fish was hungry and eating some food, couldn't the food just go right out the gills then? How do you make sure that doesn't happen if you're a fish? Well, welcome the gill rakers. The gill rakers are these stiffer parts that will kind of stick forward to kind of guide and make sure that anything going into the mouth is staying in the mouth as far as far as food, <laughs> as far as food particles go. And then the water can still get out. That way you're not getting food that's stuck in the gills. You're not losing your food going out the side of your head and they're still able to, to eat. Now there's some animals like uh, the, the whale shark, uh, basking sharks, that have really important gill rakers because they feed primarily on plankton. So here's a picture of a basking shark. You can see those gill arches right there. And then they have gill rakers that they use to help them capture plankton as they're going through the, mouth with, going through the water with their mouth wide open like this. Now, mackerel, they can eat plankton as well. They can also eat small fish. They can even eat their own young sometimes. Um, they eat basically what they can fit into their mouths. Uh, but they tend to eat smaller things because they don't have nearly as big of a mouth as this. They don't eat quite as much at the same time as a basking shark. Uh, but they do need to eat food that will be small enough to fit into their mouth. So actually, let's take a closer look at their mouth because maybe you haven't looked very carefully at a fish's mouth before. So let's take a look at this back at my document camera. Again, I'm not gonna cut anything open at this point, but let's take a look at the mouth. So here it is. And notice the mouth is what we call a terminal mouth. It's right at the very end. So it's not like way down here. It's not one that's like pointed up. That's a fish that would normally sit on the bottom and get their food from the top. They have this terminal mouth. So their food is pretty much straight in front of them for the most part. And if we were to open it, this is what it would look like. So this lower jaw here comes straight down they have this extra little sort of, um, um, I don't want to call it skin, but this extra tissue, I guess, that is connected so it can open its mouth even wider. And then I want you to answer this question. Do fish have tongues? Tell me, can you, can you see anything in here? Let me try tilting it this way. Maybe wearing black gloves was not the best idea for this one. But they do actually have a tongue. Can you see it? If I put it to the side, you can see how that tongue sticks out right there. So it's not like a cute little pink or red tongue. Instead, it's just kind of this silvery grayish. In fact, if you were to look straight on in, which I don't think you'll be able to see very well, um, you can actually see it's a silver. It has a silver tip to its tongue. So they do have tongues, they can taste their food. And they also have, what's interesting is on the inside of their mouths and their throats, they actually have taste buds as well. Okay, so we've got the mouth, we've got the tongue. Um, and also in their, in their mouths, they have, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. Let's see if they have teeth. 
oh, this is what I should have done. Now you can see that tongue better. But they do have these little sort of ridges, these little teeny tiny teeth right here, if you can see those. So they do have teeth for eating um, their food, small, whether it be small plankton or whether it be um, some of the other um, fish. So let's take a look inside. So now this is something that, okay, if you're queasy, it might not be as, um, as enjoyable for you to watch, but what we're gonna do is take a little cut and get a better view of their gills. Oh, and somebody um, mentioned the fact that they hatch. Does that mean they hatch out of a shell? Okay, so the fish all start off as eggs, right? So they're born, different types of fish have different uh, ways of reproducing. And so these fish will egg, they'll actually, it's not a shell. It's not something that they, that they crack out of, um, but they will be, um, they'll grow very, very, they'll start off very, very small and they will grow into larger fish. So even in their younger stages of life, uh, they're considered plankton because they're so, so tiny. Uh, but the parents don't really take care of their eggs. They just kind of let them, let them be, they're on their own. They're not watching over their young uh, once, they, once they hatch. Uh, but anyhow, yes, they do have, they have eggs. All right, so I, I wanna make sure that I, these aren't live bearing fish. I, I'm pretty sure that they are egg layers. All right, so the mouth, the teeth, the gills. So we said that they, bear with me as I'm trying to figure out the right lighting and how zoomed in we should be for this. Okay, they are egg layers, we did confirm. So right here, to make it easier to see these gills, I'm actually going to clip off this operculum right here. Okay, so you can see right here, one of these gill arches right here, and then these gill filaments. Now, maybe I should put my glove on again for this. If we were to put, if I was to put my finger right into the mouth of this, of this fish and kind of go out this way, now you can suddenly see those gill rakers. Do you see these right here? Those lighter parts that are kind of becoming a little bit more visible. So those are the gill rakers, and they're kind of capturing my finger to make sure that it's not going to go out the gills. And so let me cut one of these off, and we can take a closer look at one. So here's one gill arch. So these, these right here are the filaments, the gills, and then these stiffer parts right here are the rakers capturing the food. So I think those are pretty interesting. All right, so let's look at the other parts of our fish. That's the operculum. Also on the underside, remember how we said they had pelvic fins? They also have another set of fins or another fin called the anal fin, which this one is actually very, very small. And it's right in front of, sorry, it's right in front of this opening here called a cloaca. So when we talked about them laying eggs, it would come from here. If they have any waste, it's going to come from here as well. So it's the same opening for the fish called a cloaca. And if we were to look inside of them, we're going to cut from inside or from right here at the cloaca. I'm gonna cut forward right through these two pelvic fins up to where my gills are, and then up over here and then cut across. Now, another important thing about a fish is that it is a vertebrate. So that means they do have vertebrae, they do have bones, they're gonna have ribs here as well. So those get cut through um, in addition to just the outside skin that we're cutting off. Now, now to make it a little bit easier, rather than cutting it all right here, I have one that was cut just before this class that I prepared and we can look at it here. So again, if you're someone who's queasy, you might wanna look away and maybe just listen to what we're talking about. But here, is what you might find on the inside of your fish. Of course, feel free to give us feedback if you're being able to see these well or if it's still too, too kind of bright. Um, but do you see any evidence for those rib bones? Yeah, fish have those really small, really fine bones right here that you can see. 
So these are their ribs that would come from their uh, vertebrae, right from their backbone, which would be up here. You can kind of see this area up at the top. This is where they're connecting. So they're connecting right up here to their backbone. Well, when the water goes through gills, we talked about how it draws the oxygen out. Well, what is going to get that oxygen through the body? What's going to be pumping it through the body? Well, the heart, of course. And so here you can see when I cut this, I kind of left this one little division on. So you can still see where the, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take this off right now. So you can kind of see everything together. So here we have the division of where the, the gills are versus the rest of its body. But what's also nearby? Let's cut this off now. See what might be near those gills. What might be helping it move the oxygenated blood through its body? Well, the heart, of course. And so this right here is the heart of the fish, located very close right here, this area right here. And it's kind of a triangle shape. Do you see that triangle shape? Um, maybe we can even pull it out. So here is the fish heart. And unlike our heart, which has four chambers that kind of um, cycle blood through at different times from different parts of our body, they also have four sections of their heart, but it's really just two chambers. They have one atrium, one ventricle. Uh, actually, it's not called an atrium. Um, but they do have the one, that big part, that big part of that sort of um, this part right here is what would be the ventricle that's going to push out the uh, oxygenated blood to the different parts of its body. So the heart's located by the gills, makes sense. Well then, one of the things I notice right away is this area right here. Now if you look carefully, it almost looks like a bunch of little fingers, all these little tiny parts. Well this is actually part of their digestive system, it's called a pyloric cecum. And the cecum that are in here, the cecum, this whole thing works together to help them absorb nutrients. Um, from the food that they're eating. So this is really important for them to get the nutrition that they need. Now this right here is the liver. So fish have their liver right up here. Now the liver of this fish is going to be a lot smaller than a liver of a shark. A liver of a shark is very important for a shark to help it maintain its buoyancy because sharks have an oil-filled liver and oil is less dense than the water so it helps them to float better. Whereas these fish don't have to worry about that. They have something else that aids them in floating. And you may have heard of something called an air bladder or a swim bladder. Now this right here is a spleen. Um, I'm going to see if we can kind of move that out of the way a little bit. So we can get a better view of what's behind it. So back up here, there's this thing that's kind of shiny. Oh, I kind of popped it. It's kind of got this iridescence. Um, it's kind of shiny right back here. And this is what is called the air bladder or the swim bladder that allows the fish to actually um, float. And it brings oxygen in or it brings the, the air, the gas in, so the fish can rise and float in the water if it wants to or it can let it out so that it can sink a little bit lower. Now, of course, near the um, pyloric cecum here, we have the... Um, where the stomach is. Now, the stomach of, of the fish can be really interesting to look at at times because sometimes you can find out what the fish has been eating. Um, it can be kind of gross to look at as if this um, isn't as appetizing enough for you. Uh, but if we wanted to, and sometimes I don't do this, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you want to see what's inside the stomach of the fish? All right, let's try it. So let's see what might be inside here. So it's 
kind of hard to tell here. Occasionally, you can see little dark dots. Now, maybe even this dark dot might be an indication that they were eating some krill. Uh, sometimes you can see little um, scales, which are actually, I guess these, these could be really, really tiny scales, but they're kind of hard to see. And I know it's really, really bright. We've actually even found, um, sometimes we've even found squid inside their stomachs, like little tiny ones all intact. But that would be the stomach contents of this particular fish. All right, so if you have, I realize this is not the prettiest sight to look at. Maybe we'll go back to this one. Um, and we'll even flip it around so you can see this, this side of it as well. There we go. So that's a prettier fish to look at. Uh, now, another interesting thing is their, their eyes. So their eyes are a little bit different. The lens of their eye, I'm not going to take it out. I get a little too queasy looking at eyes. Uh, they actually have more of a, um, a rounder shape to their lens than we have. We have sort of this concave shape um, to our lens that kind of is like that, that is flexible. Uh, but fish actually have um, a rounder, not quite as round as a squid, but a rounder lens for them. Now, underneath um, the outer coating, so they have an outer coating over their eye, but then they have this fluid, this sort of gel-like um, substance that protects their, their actual lens from the outside. So if we were to go underwater and look around and open our eyes underwater, it's kind of blurry because we are used to looking at things through air and we need that layer of air to be able to see. So if we put on goggles, that will allow us to have that cushion of air between our eyes and the water and then suddenly we can see through the water. Fish don't need to worry about that because they are designed to be looking through the water and that uh, gel that they have is all that they need. They don't need any special, um, anything else on the outside. They don't need to go through wearing goggles obviously themselves. But uh, so those are their, their eyes right there. Now, are there any other questions as we've been looking at this fish or thinking about mackerel that maybe you've come up with? If you have, you're welcome to text us uh, quickly before this program ends. Or if you think about it later, you can also email us at aquarium live at, L I'm sorry, at live at lbaop.org. But text messages can come through to 562-286-1838. So again, there's the email on the bottom. Um, that you can contact us. We have staff who are here all the time, who are not all the time, but we monitor that regularly. So we're happy to answer any email questions that you have. So hopefully today, as we've been looking at the fish, you've learned a little bit more about the mackerel. Now, one thing we didn't really talk about is the coloring. Now I realize the coloring is a little bit distorted in this, but if you notice, they do have this sort of blue coloring. And they do have, maybe not quite as green as it looks right here. Uh, this can sometimes be kind of a silvery coloring. It's probably picking up on some of the other colors around it in the room right now. But look at the pattern up here. They have these like little lines that are kind of coming down. And if you think about how that might help the fish, if they're near the surface, and if you've ever looked at the water as the light's coming through, those waves at the surface of the water are kind of breaking up and creating little shadows. Well, having this darker coloring and this interesting pattern on them on the top actually helps it to camouflage and blend in really well to that marine environment in the water. And then on the underside, they're actually much lighter. So they have um, a light colored body and you'll see that a lot with animals in the ocean and it's what we call counter shading. So the darker on the top, lighter on the bottom. So if an animal, if they're below an animal, and an animal's looking down on them, that dark part will blend in with um, the darker parts of the ocean below them. Whereas if they're above an animal and they're looking up at the surface, they're gonna see that lighter side, that underside, um, that will be blending in with the, the top, the, the light coming in at the surface. So you'll see that a lot. Here's another example of an animal with countershading uh, the great white shark. Lighter belly, white belly, and then a little bit darker on the top. So, I hope that you enjoyed looking at the, the fish with me and keeping your hands nice and clean. And um, it doesn't even smell fishy, does it? <laughs> so thanks for joining us. We have more online academy uh, coming up tomorrow. And we hope you'll join us for our future, or I'm sorry, not tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday, isn't it? On Monday. So we'll be having more programming coming up for you. But thank you for joining us today. And if you ever stop by the aquarium, make sure that you say hi and that you watched us on Aquarium Online Academy. So have a great day, everyone. Bye.